Um, so I made a couple of new UI things um, and I just made very, very basic. So for my UI titles, I add a little you win and a little game over. Uh, and we're gonna include this into the game. Um, you could obviously do a lot more with this visually, but I just wanted something simple. And then I also created a little checkpoint uh, flag. I'm gonna use this as the end of the level for now. Um, this is something that you could also use as an animation or do something a little more interesting. I just kind of made it really quickly uh, before class so I would have the art so we can just move on. Um, but normally you would want to do some type of animation there. Uh, and I'll talk about that when we put it in. So uh, we're going to add in a uh, UI for when we uh, have a game over and when we um, win the game. Uh, so in this game, there's just going to be one level. And so next week, we'll probably talk about adding more levels. But for now, we're just going to assume that this game is just very short. Um, so I'm going to start by creating the new UI scenes that I need. So I'm going to go into Scenes. And in the UI scene, uh, these scenes are going to be very similar to our menu and our instructions. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate one of those. So I'll start with the, I'll duplicate the Start menu. So I'll just right click and duplicate. And I'll call this uh, game over. And then I'll duplicate again. I'll hit Command D. Oops. Make sure I have the file system selected. And I'll call this game, this one, uh, win game. It doesn't really matter what you call these as long as you can find them. Um, and now there's a couple ways that we can set this up. One way is to have the UI actually appear over top of the, the rest of the game. Um, and another way is to actually just open that other scene. So uh, let's look at uh, opening it within the scene first. So I'm going to take this game over scene and I'm going to put it inside of my UI section. So I'm going to go to UI here and I'm going to make a link button here and I'm going to go to the game over scene. Um, and I haven't actually edited this yet, which is why it still looks like the start menu. So let's go ahead and edit this before we do anything else. So I'm going to click on the scene button to open the game over scene. And you can see I haven't changed anything. It still says start menu, even though it's really the game over scene. So I'm going to change this to game over. Uh, so that'll uh, hopefully update it here. Oh, no, it doesn't. Let's see if we can we update this. OK, uh, we could just rename it, but let's uh, just delete it and re-import it. OK, so now we see that's the game over. Um, and so when we get a game over, uh, we don't want to see this game. We want to be able to show a different graphic. So I'll just go to fix the graphic first. And so this is for the title. And remember, we, na we made a texture atlas here. So if you have a sprite, you could you could just change the sprite frame or if you downloaded frames, you could do it that way. But since we made a texture atlas here, what we have to do is just actually update the texture atlas. So I'm just going to move the Y down. And it's going to be down, I think, 512 times 2. So no, that's you win. Let's try, maybe it's just 512. Or I guess it's going to be 512 times 3. So I'm just moving down by the entire height of each frame, uh, one at a time. And there we have game over. Uh, I, again, made it kind of grayscale so I can change the color if I want to. Um, so I may, you know, go down to visibility. And if this is game over, you know, we might want to make it like red or something like that. We can choose a color here. Uh, or you could, you know, do whatever color you think is appropriate for your game. And maybe since the game over is red, let's make our buttons red as well. So uh, I think this is where I changed the buttons. Maybe it's here. Yeah, so let's change the buttons. I'll use a color picker and do that. So now we can have the buttons match our game over. You don't have to do it this way, but uh, that's one way you can do it. And then instead of start and quit, um, what I want to have is uh, maybe start over and, and quit also. Um, and so uh, 
what I'll do, this is going to be, so you may need to end up actually modifying aspects of the code to get something that you like here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the start button um, since it doesn't say start over. You could make new buttons with the right graphics or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to delete this one. And then I'm going to take this control uh, that has the instructions button in it. I'll change the label here. And I'll rename this start over. Um, so uh, I would obviously do this, you know, to match whatever. But for now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move this up here. Um, uh oh. Oh, if I take this out of my. Whoa. Okay. Uh, okay. So for some reason, if I take this. If I move this up here, it doesn't take up enough space here. So I think actually I would have to change this control node to like a margin node maybe. And there we go. OK. So now we have start over and quit. And now I just need to reattach this in this node. So instead of, um, instead of going to instructions, I'm going to disconnect this. And I'm going to connect this. Uh, to uh, start button and click OK and connect. And then this is just going to go to whatever scene is loaded here. Um, so you could go back to like the main menu, um, but I'm just going to load the level again. So it'll, I'll reload the level. I don't know why I can't change the, the size of this window, but you can see the load level. And I'm just going to reload level three here. So if we get a game over, we're going to show this on top of the rest of the game. And then there's two buttons, start over or quit. And quit should work the same way, um, you know, even though I haven't updated the script here. So there we go. We see it on top of the screen. Um, and what we can do is we'll take a look at the, the metric script. We'll actually handle uh, some of this for us. Or no, sorry, the scene manager script. So the scene manager script, OK, I still can't change the size of this, which is kind of annoying. Let's see if I go over here, maybe I can. Or maybe if I close this. There we go. OK, so let's close that and move this over. OK, so in the scene manager, there's a little area for my game over scene. And so I can drag this in here. Um, oops, OK, I guess I can't. Let's go to here. OK. So we have our game over scene here. And then if we look at the scene manager, we'll get a game over in a couple different conditions. And this is where you might want to change the code for those conditions. Um, so uh, let's see. So when the player dies, uh, that's when we get a game over. And here is where uh, the way it's, it's written right now, um, actually, I guess I only have one option in here. So let's go over this. But right now, I don't have this set up. I actually don't need this here. Uh, anyway, so this is just going to load the game over scene. Um, and that can happen on two conditions. One is if we get hit enough times that we die. Or the other is uh, if we fall enough times. Uh, so if we fall once, we're just going to restart the scene. But if we keep falling, eventually we'll just die and, and lose the level. Um, so let's go back here. And so it looks like we actually don't need it here. I think I was remembering a different setup. Um, so let's see what happens. OK, so if I get hit three times now, I should, instead of uh, just nothing happening, I should go to the game over scene. OK. So we got the game over. Oh, I still have some music in there that I added for the start menu. Uh, and so hopefully my buttons work. If I click Start Over, there we go. Uh, and let's see if I get hit again. If I just run into these flowers, actually, I'll, I'll get hit. OK, so then we got another game over, and we can just quit. OK, so that's actually loading a separate scene. Um, 
I think maybe the other way we're going to do this will be with the uh, with the um, the win game. Although I don't really... Let's take a look at this script because it looks like it's... Okay, we have a game one scene here. And we're kind of doing a similar thing. Although I actually don't see this anywhere. Okay, so uh, we have a different way of doing this. So let's go over that now. Okay, so let's say we have like a thing over here where we can win the game. We need an area just like we would have for like a collectible or an enemy. So we're gonna have to create, we have the UI for the win game. Actually, we still have to edit that. So we can do that in a second. But we need an area to kind of trigger this uh, game being won. It doesn't necessarily have to be triggered by getting to a certain area. It could be like if you get enough points or something like that but we'd have to change the scene manager script for that. So let's just implement an area here, but let's let update our win game script first. So here's our win game. Let's change this to win game. And then we wanna change the art here. So we have a texture atlas. We're just gonna move this down. So let's do 512 times two. So it says you win and we can give this a nice color um, like pink looks good and then we can change our buttons if we want to we don't have to do this again it's just you know if you think you want those to match and then if we win the game we basically have the same options we can restart or we can quit um, so let's uh, get rid of uh, our start button again and let's change our control node to a margin node again and so we can move this up here and then we'll just change this to uh, play again and you don't even really have to have a separate menu for this you could just like go back to the start menu but it's kind of nice to show the player that they won the game so we'll have this little you win scene here and then the way we implement this there's a couple different ways that we can can do it. So let's look at that. Um, so one way is like what we just saw with the game over where we just trigger that scene. Uh, so to do this, we need a little area at the end. So I'm going to make a new uh, component for this. So I'll make a new scene. This will be a 2D scene. And uh, let's call this the uh, end level. Um, and I'm going to save this inside scenes, inside components. And I'm just gonna call this end level and save that. And so this is pretty much similar to all of our other uh, uh, components. Actually, it should be an area. So I'm gonna change the type to an area. So it should be able to detect when the player enters. And just like our other scenes, it's gonna have an animated sprite. Um, although I didn't actually create an animation for this because I was kind of in a rush. So for my animation, I'm going to have just the regular idle. Uh, so that's, I have this in my sprites. I just have this little checkpoint animation. And this only has one horizontal and two verticals. So this is just going to be my animation. It's just one frame, uh, but you could add some stuff to it to make it look a little nicer. Um, so there's our little end level flag. Um, and then we'll make another animation uh, and we'll call this activated. I think that's what it is. We'll check the code in a second. Uh, and this one we don't want to loop because uh, we could have an animation that shows here. This one should autoplay. Got to remember all that those little things. Uh, so we're going to grab the same sprite. And I'm just going to choose the other one. And I'm going to copy and paste this frame a couple times just so it takes some time before it it, it triggers the the next stage. Um, so then we just need a little collider uh, to know when we're inside this area. So I'm gonna make a collision shape. I'm just gonna go with a simple rectangle and then I'm just gonna make it kind of the size of the flag. It doesn't really have to match that closely uh, as long as it's like somewhere around here when the player hits this, we'll win the game. Or uh, later next week, we'll go over going to the next level. Um, you might want to have a sound to say that you won the game, so you could add a sound in here, but for now, let's just go ahead with this. So 
we're going to look at two different scripts that we can use here. Um, so uh, for this first script, let's go ahead and load. We'll go to scripts. And there's two scripts at the bottom here. One is to trigger a new scene. So that'll load a scene like we were loading the game over scene um, or loading a level. And the other is to trigger a UI element. So that'll just open some UI on top of the scene that's already existing. So let's look at the trigger scene first. So I'm going to open that up. And we'll look at that script. So there's a few things that we need in here. Uh, so actually, this animation should be called entered, not activated. You can see where you would add the sound here. And then we have our normal thing here. With when we Once we play the animation, we wait for it to finish. And then we load a level here. Um, so I'm going to make sure to update this to entered instead of activated. And then we have to connect our animation finished uh, to the on animation finished here. And then we just need to choose where we want to go when this happens. So we have our load level path. But we don't want to put that in the default uh, scene because that'll change depending on where we are. Um, so we're going to add that in the game, uh, in the level itself when we add it in here. So we should be ready now. So uh, I'm going to instance a scene, the and it's going to be the end level scene. And this is going to be over here somewhere. So I'm just going to drag it all the way to the end. And I'm going to put my player pretty close to there so I can test it without having to get through any obstacles. So I'm going to give this a try. And what this should do is uh, trigger the win game scene, but I forgot to set up my collisions and layers as as I often do. Um, let's move this level down a little bit. So uh, let's go back to the end level scene, and we have to remember to set up our collisions so that we will actually collide with the player. So for this one, let's set the layer. We can add a new layer name here. We can say end level. And uh, so we'll set that and turn off this one. And then we just leave the mask the same because we're just going to interact with the player. Uh, when we go back to the uh, level three, we should also remember to add this to our player's mask. So let's add that there. Um, and it may not update here. So let's just double check. Yeah, it didn't update here. So let's add that there. OK, now we should see that working. So if we hit this flag, oh, okay, it didn't work. So we might have a bug. Let's check our output. Um, I don't see anything that would cause this. So we'll have to debug a bit. Because uh, the player is definitely inside that box. So we should be triggering the level. Oh, maybe we I actually forgot to add the level. Okay, so we have to remember to add the level here. So uh, the level we want to add in this case is actually a UI. And it's our win game. So let's save that. And let's test this. Okay, we still didn't get anything. Um, so let's double check our collisions. We have the right layer of the end level. Uh, let's see. Okay, we have the right layer. Okay. Um, oh, uh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to, we always have to connect the signal back to the script. So we need the body entered signal for when the player uh, enters the area. So I'm just going to click on the end level node, double click body entered, make sure we've got that there. Uh, make sure that looks like it's there. Okay. Sorry, I forgot that. It's a lot of little steps to remember. So let's try it again. Okay. So there's a little bit of a delay where it would be playing the animation. Uh, and then we win the game. So we can play again, or we can quit. Uh, it looks like I forgot to change this one, because that goes to instructions, but that's OK. 
Um, so uh, we can set where we want to go uh, in the win game. I'm not sure why. Oh, because I didn't update this instructions. So let's disconnect that and connect it to start button. OK, you can really connect it anywhere you want. You just have to decide where it's going to go. OK, so then one more example. So I'm going to make another type of end level that's just going to trigger a UI. Um, so you, you know, either one of these approaches is perfectly fine. Uh, either way, you want to do it, whichever matches what you're going for in the game. Um, so I'm just going to duplicate this one. So here's the end level. I'm going to hit Command-D to duplicate. And I'll just call this end level UI, just so we know which one it is. And for this one, I'm going to uh, get rid of that uh, script and load a new one. So this is for trigger UI. And that's going to open some UI that's already visible in the scene. And so in this one, it's a very similar uh, script, except uh, we're going to send a signal um, to open a UI to the scene manager. Uh, and so that's all it's really going to do. Um, there's a couple, s I should probably, this is like an old thing. I, I should actually really update that, but that's OK. Um, let's change the name of this to end level UI. So I'll probably update these in the script a little bit because these are kind of old. Uh, but we can just connect these signals again. Um, so the first is the on body entered. We need to reconnect this because it's not going to be connected to the right place. So uh, this should really be just on body entered. This is sort of the old Godot style. So I'm actually just going to edit this and I'll update the scripts in a minute. So the old Godot would have all this extra stuff in here. We're just going to do on body entered. And so we'll do that. And this one as well, we're just going to take out some of the code. I'll update these later. So we'll connect our animated sprite as well. So we have to disconnect this one and reconnect it. OK. So now this will work, but we also have to connect it up to the scene manager. So there's a little bit of more work we have to do here. Um, so I'm going to move this end level guy over here. And then I'm going to add another one just as the example. So I'm going to link this up. So I'm going to find the end level UI. And I'm going to drag. Whoop. Let's lock our tile map. Uh, where did that end up? OK, it looks like, oh, I just need to change this. OK. So this one is our end level UI. And this is going to have to open some UI scene. So we need to add that in there. And the way that this is different is it has an extra node, although I'm not seeing it there. So let's delete this one and just make sure we import the right one. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to instance my end level UI. And I'm just going to drag it up here. OK, there it is. And I'm just going to add it right there. And this one should have, OK, I still don't see the signal. OK, so maybe let's close a couple things. Did I not do the right script? OK, for some reason, this got changed. I don't know what just happened. But we want trigger UI. OK, that should have an extra, oh, geez. Uh, OK, why doesn't it have, there it is. OK, I don't know what just happened, but it looks like 
everything is still connected. And there's our on activate. Okay. Um, and then we also, this is actually active, not entered. So there's a couple different things that we have to make sure to change. So that animation, if we look at the script, is looking for active. I should make these all the same. I'll probably update these scripts. Actually, let's go ahead and just change this right now. I'm gonna change that to entered, so don't worry about that. Leave that the same. Because they really should be consistent. And I'll update the scripts later. Okay. If we go back here, hopefully this shows our on activate. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna connect the on activate to our scene manager. And we'll use the scene manager to show the uh, win game scene. So I'm gonna add that to my UI first. I'm gonna instance this and go to win game. And then in my scene manager, there's a little uh, win game uh, guy right here. Oh, this is still pulling it from uh, the scenes here. So that's fine actually. So we don't need to do this. I don't know why I keep forgetting this. Let's just delete that. Okay, so we have our scene manager. We have a reference to our game win scene. And so now we just have to tell it when we hit this uh, end level UI. So here we're gonna double click the on activate uh, and we're gonna go to the scene manager and we're basically just gonna make up a new function here. So this function doesn't exist because there's different ways to do this. So if we can write whatever we want in the receiver method. So we're just going to say on win game and click uh, connect. Um, there we go. So we have on win game. And here we can just decide what to do. And so what we want to do is uh, show this UI. So we're going to uh, use the UI reference here, game one. We're gonna say game one, and we're gonna add it into the scene. So the way that we can do that is, uh, I don't have, mm, I really should have more scaffolding for this. What we can do is just add a child And I'll put it. I'll put this into the code as well, because there should really be more scaffolding for this. So we'll add a child, uh, which is our game one scene, but we need to actually add it to our UI. Um, so let's add another line. So we'll say variable UI is uh, get tree dot scene current scene, and then find this should really be in here <laughs> I'll add this to the scripts later uh, and then we're gonna say UI dot add child I think this will work let's give it a shot it doesn't want me to do that it's called as a function but it's a node okay so let's try that okay And uh, this is this is an error with the code because this is an old script. Okay. Uh, we don't. Huh. Okay. It's I don't know why. It's saying I can't add a UI scene here, but I should be allowed to. Add child in base canvas layer. Uh, okay. I actually don't know what, that's a new error for me. So this must be a new Godot 4 thing that I haven't encountered before. So I'll have to debug that and I'll update the script so that'll work. 
But that's the basic idea, is that when you hit this, it would load a UI on top of the game. Uh, so sorry that's not working right now, but we'll add that uh, soon. Uh, anyway, so uh, there's a few errors that we need to fix, but those are the two basic options when we get to the end of a level. Or if we lose a level, we can either show a UI uh, to let the player start again or quit, or we can uh, go to a separate scene that basically does the same thing. Um, all right, so let's stop there.